Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day Jesus has created. We're celebrating his goodness. Are you thankful that you got up out of bed today? Are you thankful that his mercies are new every morning upon our hearts? You know, the word says that if it wasn't for the grace of God, if he dealt with us according to our sins, who could stand it? No one. 
we thank God because of his presence that's in our life, because of his mercy and his goodness, that we can boldly approach his throne of grace and we can see his power moving in our hearts, moving in our lives. It's great to see everyone this morning. Uh, we have uh, three streams going, three. <laughs> and uh, so uh, most of you right here are on our uh, New and Living Way church stream, which uh, for those of you that are, uh, uh, are regular attenders, uh, that's going to be a good one for you to be on just because that's kind of where the, the tribe is. Uh, but I'm also streaming uh, live on my personal YouTube, I'm, I'm sorry, personal Facebook page uh, just for people that I encounter that may not even be a part of our church family. And uh, also we're streaming on our YouTube page. So if you guys would uh, take a moment it's good to see Kevin Kennedy, Gene Richards, Cheyenne Wilson, uh, Stan Daly, uh, Gene Richards, uh, Diana is watching, Michael Besson, Basson, and uh, Phil and Esther Mitchell, Chess Croco, good to see you. Uh, it looks like Shyla is on and others. And uh, so uh, we, we appreciate everyone coming here. And uh, I just want to take a moment, go ahead and share. If you uh, click on the, uh, the stream, just hit the share button and then hit write post and then you can just click and just say it's it's our men's group or whatever you want to say uh, uh yep so we've got good audio and i'd like for us to just start today you know the uh jesus said where two or three are gathered together in my name i'm there and i believe that even though we're not physically in the same building that uh, through the gift that God has given of, of technology, we can dive into the Word of God this morning. Amen. It's good to see Thomas Edmonds. Let's all give a shout out to Thomas. And uh, 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 Gene, if Thomas hasn't called you yet, he's got a question for you about getting that GMC Sierra on the road. <laughs> but but uh, guys, I want us to go before the Lord We're going to pray. Father, I thank you. Guys, let's just take a moment and just thank God. Lord, we thank you right now for your presence. God, this is the day that you have made. And Lord, we start our day and we lift our hearts, we lift our hands to you. And God, we ask that today would be a day full of your grace, full of your power, full of your glory. Father, we are thankful we are grateful. We are humbled, Lord, that you've called us by name and that your grace is upon our hearts. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. Father, we pray right now for our president, Donald Trump. God, let your power rise up within him like it did Jehu like it did Elijah. Lord, let the spirit of prophecy come upon him. God, I just pray right now you would embolden him. And Lord, that you would cause all of the enemies that have arisen against him to be dis dis dismantled, dispelled, disarrayed. Father, we pray for the governors of the states, specifically Governor Inslee, and those that are still um, holding things uh, tightly, God, we just speak, the word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. We just pray right now the power of God to move upon all of the governors in our lands, that they would go according to your plans, that they would go according, that they would go according to your will, your ways, your purposes, your directives, Father. I ask this. And Lord, for every person that's watching right now, we start afresh. This is a fresh day full of your grace, full of your glory. And we will give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Take a moment right now. Just begin to press in, guys. Just begin to press in. Just begin to bless the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. Lead us, God, as we study your word this morning. We pray for an unction. From on high, we pray that you would fill our thoughts, fill our minds with your grace and your goodness. In the name of Jesus, everyone said amen. Amen. So, uh, guys, we are continuing our Bible study, and uh, you can go ahead and turn 
in uh, the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, and uh, written by King Solomon, David's son. And uh, go ahead, and we're going to dive into the Word today. And uh, this is an interactive uh, study together. <clears throat> uh, we will be meeting. We'll be meeting, Lord willing, uh, uh, in our building in a very short amount of weeks. And uh, we'll be able to come together. And when we do that, we know what time it is, right? Breakfast burrito time. <laughs> so, so we'll be doing that. And uh, who knows, we still may be streaming. We'll see what happens. But uh, normally, the men all kind of take turn if they feel like they're gleaning something, if, they're, if God's sharing something with them out of the Scriptures. So if during this study, if you feel like you've got a word or something, don't even hesitate. Put it out there uh, because we want people to be encouraged uh, in, in what's going on. So it is good to see everyone. Uh, looks like we have people viewing uh, on... Um, <coughs> <clears throat> online. So we're going to, we're going to dive in, uh, Proverbs chapter 15. Okay, guys. Now, a as you know, <laughs> as you know, this is, uh, Proverbs doesn't pull any punches. I mean, uh, it's going to tell us straight. <laughs> it's going to tell us straight how it is. It's not going to beat around the bush. And that's what we need. Amen. That that's what we need as men. Also, some uh, the ladies that are uh, watching, but we're specifically talking to the, the men because there's specific issues that we're dealing with because God, uh, I want to kind of open this up to let us know, men, that uh, men have been given a greater responsibility in the earth when it comes to the home, when it comes to the family, when it comes to our nation. Uh, as go the men, so goes the, the country. You show me a country that's full of men that are full of the Spirit of God, and I'll show you a country that the families will flourish. And that's why it's so important, guys, that each and every day we realize the mantle that God has placed upon us to do what God has called us to do. And that does not mean to be demanding or hard or harsh, but to be Full of the word of the Lord. And that means when we speak to our family, when we speak to our friends, our co-workers, our kids, whoever they are, that it's not our words that are coming out of our mouth, but it's God's word. And that people can look at your life and that you are a, a um, support in their life. They, in other words, they know they can always count on you. They know that your word is your bond. They know that if you tell them you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, you're going to be there. So all of these lessons that we are learning and all of these truths that we feel the Lord is imparting to us, we've got to take these out and we've got to, we've got to live them out. They've got to be something that becomes a part of who we are. And uh, um, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And uh, if I know any, any of you men that have gone through hardship, if you've gone through hardships, raise, raise both hands, right? And uh, maybe some of you haven't had as many hardships, but they come to all of us in different forms. And the same way that a diamond is formed out of the rough through much pressure, many times there are situations that hit our life and it causes us to be refined. It causes us, you know, steel can't get tempered without going through the fire. And we've got to let the Holy Spirit bring that temperance into our life. Why? The days are crazy. Can we just say it that way? And this generation needs godly men that will stand, that will rise up, that will say, this is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter what CNN or Fox or any of the news outlets are saying. It doesn't matter what the president or even the governors are saying. What matters is what is the Lord saying and how do we live our lives in accordance to what Jesus is saying while still fulfilling our mandate in the earth. So here we go. It's so good to see everybody. Glory to God. And here we go. Wow. Are we really ready? <laughs> oh, we'll find it here in just a second. Here we go. Boom. Ow. Oh, did we really have to start with this? <laughs> a soft answer turns away wrath. This is Proverbs 15, verse 1. But a harsh word <clears throat> stirs up anger. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So what does that mean? That means it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. 
So a soft answer will turn wrath away. Boy, have I seen this. You ever been in the midst of a discussion and some, your voices start here and someone goes, <laughs> right? And a lot of times you go, <laughs> and then they'll go, <laughs> and then you go, <laughs> right? Well, this is what happens, guys. Someone comes up here. Okay, let's say, start the conversation here. Someone comes up here. You know what you do? You stay right here. Okay? Or you might need to go here. Boom. Bring it down. Okay? And why is that? Why is that? Because the greater of a difference is, here's a, here's a, here's a word of wisdom to you. It takes two people to argue. So, so that means if you're encountering someone, guys, if you're encountering someone and they want to start and argue, a cert, soft answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. We see this on a national scale many times where uh, even a public official could have said something a completely different way. And guess what? It would have turned that situation to where it would turn that wrath away. A lot of times we're blaming other people for getting mad when we ourselves can bring down our tone, we can bring down our answer to where it's a soft answer. And uh, the Bible talks about this. It talks about letting your speech be seasoned with grace. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So ask yourself this, the next time you feel, and it says a soft answer, an answer, an answer. Well, that's because you're in the middle of a discussion and sometimes people hit you with something. Am I talking to anyone today? They hit you, bam, with that. And then you have a decision. I'm either going to have what the scripture says is a soft answer or I'm going to give a harsh word. Usually, usually people never receive harsh words. Can I get a witness this morning? You know, you're going to you're gonna bite back it won't get you anywhere. So here's the real question to us, ma'am. Do you want your words to be effective? That's the question. Do you, do you want to invest in a conversation or do you want to take a depletion? So, so a soft answer turns away wrath. A harsh word stirs up anger. How many times? I want to put it up there one more time because this is so important. The way we deal with people, the way we answer people, harsh words okay yeah i can see it guys <laughs> people are already yeah two to tango says mark lydic <laughs> michael basson says help me lord yes gary kimber says yes amen harsh words only lead to more trouble so we see here that uh, we don't need to stir up anger do we we need to turn wrath away so you have to ask yourself if you are a thermometer or are you a thermostat? <laughs> a th thermometer is just going to tell you what temperature it is in the room. <laughs> a thermostat is going to regulate the temperature, right? In other words, it might be 100 degrees outside, but because I'm a thermostat, I'm going to set it to 72. <laughs> I'm going to set this conversation down to 72. And sometimes you might need to walk away if, you're, if you feel that, that, that uh, reaction coming. As I shared last week, the, uh, the Lord told me, get rid of the volcano on the inside, get his love on the inside. And that uh, we're not trying to match wits with people. We have to be men that uh, will keep that. The Bible says that uh, someone that rules his spirit is stronger than someone that takes a whole city. So let's take the city today. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, here we go. We are going to verse, if I can get it here, <laughs> verse 2. And here we go. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. So what are we talking? Again, uh, the first, <laughs> do, you, do you notice a theme here? Check it out. Look at verse one. Soft answer turns away wrath. Harsh word. What does that deal with? Your mouth, M-O-U-T-H. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth, M-O-U-T-H, of the fools pours forth foolishness. Do you see this, guys? So these two scriptures go hand in hand. So you ask yourself, in this situation that I'm dealing with here, do I have the mouth of the, do I have the tongue of the wise? Okay. Or am I just spouting off at the mouth? See, do you see how Solomon, God is using Solomon to bring this truth? Yeah. We need the truth in. Mark Leidick says we need a cooling down sometimes to organize our thoughts. Okay. 
I've said it sometimes this way. If Jesus were standing right here physically, which we know he's always with us, and he fills us, you know what? He's on the inside of us, and he wants, to sp- he wants his words to be spoken. So that scripture there, check it out. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. So what are we talking about? Right here. Say, let's say this together. Holy Spirit, let my words be the words of life. Today, Jesus said it this way. The words that I speak are spirit, and they are life. The Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit, okay? M- Michael Basson says it's the taming of the tongue. That's right. Um, in James, it talks about how great a matter, I love the King James, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. <laughs> what does that mean? I can take a teeny, tiny, tiny little match this big, <laughs> and I can set a forest on fire that'll bring millions of dollars worth of damage. And isn't that the way it is in our life with our words, man? We have to know that when we speak, right, we want to set the devil's kingdom ablaze. We want to to bring destruction to his kingdom. We don't want to bring destruction with our words to something God is building up. I kind of said it this way before. You know, God is into, into the business of building people up building people up, encouraging, strengthening, uh, uh, giving them grace. And so you have to ask yourself, if you're tearing things down that the Lord is building, re- realize the next time that you want to get mad at someone, that you can tear that person down, but yet God is building them. So we don't want to be someone that's working against what Jesus, boy, that's a wild way to look at it. We don't want to be working against what God is doing. It would kind of be like Jesus sitting there and he's building a wall, right? <laughs> and he's building all these bricks, right? And we go up to it and, and we just take a sledgehammer, smash. And Jesus says, what are you doing? I'm building this. And you say, well, they, you know, they said something to me. No, let's not destroy what God is building. I mean, Paul talked about it even if you, he went over someone's house and maybe they were a vegan and they believe it was a sin to eat meat, right? Not, not only for health reasons, but they, they thought it was a sin. Well, Paul said that if I'm over at this vegan's house, right, I don't want to offend them because Jesus is doing something in them. So as long as I'm around them, guess what? I'm a vegan too. <laughs> now I'm going to go home and I'm going to have steak in my house. But while I'm with that person, I don't want to tear down what God is doing. Isn't that a good word, guys? Okay, amen. Anyone have a word to share about that? Good to see Barb Mitchell. Uh, it's good to have Kevin Kennedy on today. Diane Hanna. Hey, be acceptable in his sight. Uh, Gary Kimber says, Lord, help me. Keep the tongue of the wise. Michael Basson says, let the words of my mouth, there it is, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. Okay, so now we're going to check out verse Three. Now, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Check it out. The eyes of the Lord are where? Everywhere. Keeping watch on the evil and the good. That means that God sees what's going on in Washington. He sees what's going on in your mind. He sees what's going on in your heart. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are where? Every place. The eyes of the Lord are on your computer, on your phone, right? Uh, uh, In the city, in the nations. And he watches and he sees it. And sometimes we get mad because we, uh, we see injustices. Well, guess what? God sees all of these things. So we have to understand that God sees it. He hears our conversation. And we want our conversation to bring him glory and honor. Amen. So that's Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Now we're going to go to verse 4, okay? A wholesome tongue. Here we go. Back to the same. <laughs> Are we seeing this, guys? Look at this. I mean, look, check it out. We went to verse 1, right? A soft answer. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise. <laughs> verse 4, a wholesome tongue. Ding, ding, ding. Do you think that there's any kind of, of uh, theme going on here? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness in it, in the tongue, it breaks the spirit. I'll say it this way, that when we are, when we're speaking wholesome words, 
it is a tree. It's a tree of life, man. It gives you strength, energy, vitality, um, it, encouragement, faith, right? It literally affects you physically. You ever, have you ever, don't, don't, don't uh, show me your hands, but uh, have you ever just lost it? I mean, just got mad. I mean, just lost it. How did you feel afterward? Did you feel warm fuzzies? Did you feel like, oh, wow, the ocean breeze and just tingly feelings all over of warmth and joy and happiness? No. How did it feel? Man, you were tired. You were upset. Sometimes it brings depression on, anger, loneliness, sadness, sorrow, oppression, sickness, um, mental, not a good space. All that, all that. Okay, because we didn't use a wholesome tongue, our tongue right here. Okay, if you have a wholesome tongue, it will bring life, not only to you, friends, but whenever we're in a situation and we're dealing with people, which we are all dealing with people, <laughs> when we're dealing with people, we have to have a wholesome tongue because a wholesome tongue, here it is again, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness breaks your spirit. So anytime we allow ourselves to go negative, anytime we allow ourselves to go down, we condescending down and we're just, we're just eh, with our mouth. So, so your mouth can determine what kind of day you're going to have. In fact, you can determine today what kind of day you're going to have. It's not, it absolutely is not based on how you feel. But it is based on what you know to be true. And as you allow the word of the Lord to come out of your mouth. The, the word says it's a tree of life. So which tree do you want today? A tree of life? Or do you want your spirit just to feel broken? Well, guess what? God, I like this because you've got two parallels here. The first parallel here, check it out. The first parallel is wholesome, right? Wholesome tree is a tr uh, tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness breaks the spirit. So how many of you know there's a difference between being whole and being broken. And we want to be whole. Jesus has made us whole. So we've got to walk in that. Phil and Esther Mitchell says, Lord, give me ears to hear what you're saying so I can minister life to those around. That's right. That's right. Michael Besson says it causes a breach or there's a breach. That's very, very true. Excellent, excellent uh, interaction here, friends. Okay, so that's verse four. Now we're going to dig in to verse are we having fun yet? If you're having fun, give some hearts, some thumbs up. I'm going to give a few thumbs up. I mean, this is, this is, <laughs> I'll give some hearts too. This is, yeah, this is good sober stuff. <laughs> First thing in the morning, <laughs> nothing like the word of God waking you up. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. Okay. Uh, a fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. Now, this, this works uh, not only for fathers and sons, but this works for anyone that God wants to use in your life to speak truth to you. What am I saying? I'm saying God wants to use you to speak life to some people today, okay? So, so uh, he also wants to use people to speak truth in your life today. And how you receive that, Okay, how you receive a fool despises fa his father's instruction. He who receives correction is prudent. Here's a wild prayer. <laughs> Jesus, who are you going to use today <laughs> to bring some correction into my life? What? Yeah, not everyone says, not everyone says, well, I don't like to be corrected. You know what? You need to like to be corrected. You know, have you, do you yell at your phone, right? When you're driving down the road. And it says, and you put your GPS in and you're supposed to, you want to get to a place and it says, turn left in 50 feet. Do you start getting mad at that phone? What are you doing? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> well, guess what, guys? Here is a word of wisdom for you today. We all need correction in our life. <gasps> Did I say that? Yes, we do. We need correction. Uh, correction is not someone just beating you. It means that sometimes things can get off in our life. Okay? And it's so important that we use, I think this proverb is amazing, these proverbs, because it talks about our tongue, our tongue, our tongue, our tongue. And then a fool despises his father's instruction, right? 
Well, how do you know that you're, how do you know that you're despising instruction? Usually people will say this, that's none of your business, right? That's the first thing people say. Secondly, they'll say, well, no one's going to tell me what to do. Ask yourself this, do I allow God to use people in my life to bring godly instruction? No, the word is, the word is godly, right? <laughs> the word is godly. People, well, I think you need to leave your wife. Uh, no, that would be stupid, okay? God gave you that wife. Man, you better love her with everything that's within you. People giving stupid counsel, I shouldn't say stupid, but people give unwise and foolish counsel all the time. So you want to be sure that whoever's speaking into your life is giving you godly advice, godly wisdom. Uh, Michael Basson says, yeah, we're back to the eyes of the Lord. Mark Leidick says, we got to stay, steer to stay between the lines. That's right. We've got to allow God to move us clearly in the right direction. Okay, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 6. Here we go, guys. In the house of the righteous... Look at that. There's much treasure. But in the income or the revenue of the wicked is trouble, right? In the house of the wicked, in the house of the righteous, there's much treasure. But the revenue of the wicked is trouble. This is not just talking about uh, physical or financial. In, in the righteousness, in other words, if you, talk, if you talk to most any person, you say, would you like to be wealthy? Okay. Now, wealthy to me is not just like having $10 million. I mean, would you like to have more than enough to where your bills can be paid and you could pay someone else's bills? Would you like to have resources to where you, I mean, who, who doesn't want to be able to bless other people? David was wealthy. Abraham was wealthy. Many people in the Bible had wealth. Now, the love of money is the root of all evil. But if you want to have a motive of helping people, right? To where it doesn't matter what kind of house you live in, you might want to buy someone else a really nice house. Here's the thing. The house of the righteous, there's much treasure. In other words, righteousness in your life is a treasure. What's it a treasure of? Let's look at the scriptures, okay? House of the righteous, there's much treasure. How about the treasure of peace, huh? How about the treasure of joy? Let me ask you this. What is your family being intact worth to you? What, is, what are your relationships, having peace in your relationships, what is that worth to you? But in the revenue, look at this, in the revenue or the income of the wicked is trouble. So this, this scripture is telling me, as long as I'm going the right way, there's going to be treasure. If I told you, I got two paths for you guys today. You go down this road right here, this road, all along the road is going to be money. <laughs> there's going to be money, there's going to be good opportunities, there's going to be blessing, there's going to be favor, 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 there's going to be uh, God moments. You go down this path here, there's going to be great blessings. Now, uh, there's a road over this way. Now, if you go this way, there's going to be trouble. Things are not going to work out well. Things are, things are uh, going to backfire. There's going to be stress, strife, arguing. This path here is when you feel, well, it's okay for me to have a few beers. Well, it's okay for me to cuss a little bit. Well, it's okay for me to talk bad about that person a little bit. It's okay to have a few little unclean thoughts. It's okay for me to lie a little bit. I don't have to go to church all the time. You know, after all, there's a, there's a, you know, people are at home. I don't need to really go. And it's all these little things. Guess what? You go the way of the Lord is blessed. The way of the Lord is blessed. I feel like preaching. Ha! Ah, the way of the Lord is blessed, but the way of the wicked is trouble. So uh, we'll put that scripture up one more time. House of the righteous, there's much treasure. Uh, much treasure. Now I want you to think about who's saying this. <laughs> Solomon, one of the wealthiest men who ever lived. So if he's saying, in the house of the righteous, there's much treasure, He's not just talking about physical treasure, but he's talking about the blessing of the Lord. Michael Basson says, that's caused me to lose everything, but by the mercy, love, and grace of God, it's coming back. And yes, Michael, we prophesy that victory to you. We say that though a righteous man stumbles, he gets up 
And God said in his word that I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten and that the locust has eaten. God not only restores minutes, hours, days, weeks, months to us, he restores years because that's our God. Awesome. Okay, so we are going to go now to verse 7. We're just diving in here. <laughs> the lips, there it is, the ma 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 mouth. Mm. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fool does not do so. Do you see the parallel, guys? Do you see the parallel? The parallel, uh, Solomon's always talking in extremes. He goes way over here. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, and then he goes, Whoop, but the heart of the fool does not do so, okay? So you want to just ask yourself this, what I'm about to say, is it wise <laughs> or is it unwise, okay? So God wants to use your lips to disperse knowledge, okay? He wants you to, to, uh, to bring, and not just head knowledge, but revelation knowledge, the revelation of God, the knowledge of God, okay? Uh, not a, a lot of people, their heads sometimes get in trouble. What we're talking about, the knowledge, knowing, to know God. Our prayer is not just to, to read the Bible. Our, our, uh, our prayer is to know the Word, who is Jesus. Now, I mean, you can miss it a mile off. When Jesus came, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they knew the Scriptures, but they didn't know the the living scripture. They didn't know the, the living word of God. So it's so important that our lips, and that's why guys, you got to, you got to get in the word. You got to let the, you got to get in the word and you got to let the word get in you. You got to get in the word, let the word get in you. Why? Because the, uh, what I, what I noticed when I was younger is uh, when this process started in my life, well, we're getting some good feedback here. Uh, Neil says that's, that's how I feel. I know it's not right. I still do that stuff. I got to take it out of my, and he does for a moment that I'm back thinking the same thing why I do not do that. What we have to do, Neil, what you're experiencing, Neil, is not uncommon. That's why it's so important, guys, to get in the Word and to stay in the Word. This is what I was going to say. When I was younger, I had this amazing encounter. I was raised in church, had a few uh, tough years uh, in my teenage years, and then a radical encounter with Christ at about 19, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, um, I knew the Lord uh, before high school, but I just kind of strayed for a few years. Uh, but I want to say this, that once I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, please hear me, this is so good. Um, I noticed, I don't think I've ever told you this, uh, Benjamin, this is actually really good. He's here. Benjamin's part of our discussion here. We might bring him on camera one of these days. But this is what I want to say, is um, when I started getting in the Word, and the Word started getting in me, I mean deep, it seems as though when I first had the encounter with the Holy Spirit, um, the Word came alive. And I mean, I could just read the Word, read the Word, read the Word, read the Word. And what I noticed is that as the Word was getting in my heart, my speech was changing. And I noticed that my, my conversation, the words, I wasn't talking about stupid stuff anymore. I wasn't just flapping my mouth. When I opened my mouth, knowledge came out. And that's why the word says, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. And it's not our knowledge. It's not, we're going to tell us how it is. I mean, I feel like it grieves the heart of the Lord so many times when we say, well, I'll tell you what I think. Don't even go there. We don't need to know what you think. We need to know what God thinks. We need to think what we need to know what Jesus is saying. And so so I noticed that as I started speaking the word of God, people would take notice and they would think, well, there's wisdom there. I mean, when I was 19 or 20 years old, I, I knew that the level of of revelation and the, the, the level of knowledge that was coming out of my mouth was not of a 19-year-old. And that is because I wasn't speaking my own words. I started getting a hold of the Word of God. Realize this, any time you're able to inject the Word of God into a situation, you are pulling upon wisdom that has been there for thousands of years. Anytime you can bring a principle 
of the Word of God into a situation, you're not, dri- you're not deriving that from your own wisdom. You're deriving that from the everlasting kingdom of God to which there is no end, no beginning, no end. I want you to think about that. The next time you encounter that situation, let, the, let your lips disperse knowledge. Oh, that's a good word, guys. Mark says, the heart is what we talk about. Phil and Esther says, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So what are we talking about, guys? We've been talking about our mouth, our mouth, our mouth, our mouth. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Whose words are you speaking? Are you speaking your words or the words of God? People are getting blessed today. I'm getting blessed too. Let's see what we got here. Boom. The sacrifice. Oops. Boy, Solomon just doesn't play around, does he? The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, right? But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Well, what, what, what he's saying is people say, oh, I love Jesus. I love God. You got all this sin in your life that you're not willing to repent of. You cuss like a sailor, but you, you say, well, I go to church, but, but people look at your life and they watch your eyes when a woman walks by or they hear your speech, or they see you on your phone, or they they know that you can quote the sports stats better than you can quote the scripture. Come on now. They know that your relationship with your children uh, could use some, 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 some work, but you want to go and you want to do all these other things. You want to either hunt or fish, or you got all these priorities in your life, but you don't want to take care of your family, right? Uh, God is not interested in just our sacrifices to him. The Bible says that the prayer, not just the prayer of people, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. And what is the prayer of the upright? It's someone that is walking in a way that is upright, okay? That means that God delights in our prayers when our walk matches our talk. Okay, God delights in that. It doesn't mean, guys, that we don't make mistakes. Okay, it doesn't mean that people don't have issues that come up. But it means that if we're living a two, a, 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 a different life, okay, to where we we say we love Jesus, we say we love God, we say we want to do this, but yet all these things are so contrary to His kingdom. Do you allow profanity in your home? Do you allow any profanity over your TV or over your phone? What kind of relationship do you have with your children? You say, well, my children won't speak to me. Send them gifts. Send them flowers. Pray for them every single day. You say, well, my my, my kids don't want to have nothing to do with me. Guess what? You can still love them. You can still do something. There's always a way that you can reach out to people. I know that this is a little strong. I know it, okay? I know it. But God does not want us to be uh, living two different ways. That's what hypocrisy meant. It means that you said one thing, but you lived another way. You said you love God, but you had all these hidden things. I know, yeah, I know this is strong. It might be strong, but it makes you strong. Yeah, what's that? It might be strong, but it makes you strong. Yeah, it might be strong, but it makes us strong. So, so uh, yeah, w- w- when we take the good medicine of the Word of God, it makes us strong. That's a good revelation. And it looks like people are really being blessed here. It looks like uh, Norm and Miriam are online as well with their hearts. They just did. I'll give you all some love too. Okay. Uh, check it out. We're going to finish up here in just a few more moments. Uh, wow, we're making really good progress here today. Next scripture is the way of the wicked is an abomination. Really? This is kind of weird. I want to go back here. I want to check it out because the verse where there's a word that jumps out. What word is it? Abomination. Sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. The way of the wicked is an abomination. <laughs> but he who loves, but he loves him who follows righteousness. So this is this is a word that we don't really hear every day. Like <laughs> if you walk up to someone, you know, no, brother, um, that's an abomination. <laughs> um, so abomination, boy, that's a strong word, isn't it? But an abomination is something that is just so detestable. It's something that is so repulsive, something that is so uh, uh, not good.
So, you know, so we see here that the way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. I mean, that is strong. I, I get it. Okay? And what I want us to see here is God loves those who follow righteousness. Now, yes, God loves everyone. But there is a delight. Let me ask you a question. If you've got two kids, one kid is just doing whatever he wants all the time, right? Just living for the devil, not serving God. Or do you love that kid? Yeah. But you've got another kid who loves Jesus, has a pure thought life, great motives, following God. Do you love that kid? Yes, but how many of you know that the, that the kid that's serving God is going to bring more joy, <laughs> more peace, right? More favor released in your life, right? And released in their lives. So, so guys, look, re realize this. Anytime the enemy is trying to get you off track, he's literally trying to take you on abomination road <laughs> would you like to go down abomination road uh no I, i'm gonna stay on the highway of righteousness here thank you very much <laughs> now we have the righteousness of god in us so god doesn't want us to take the righteousness he's given us and <laughs> go off i think i'll go on abomination road today no let's get back into the way of righteousness why because when we follow righteousness it brings health there's that clap again see that Boom. that there's life joy health peace kevin kennedy says great word kevin basson says hey kevin um, william neil barno says people tell me i'm needy and i don't uh keep my <laughs> mouth shut well you know what neil we can all learn from that we can all learn from how we need to sow you know sometimes i've said we need a duct tape gifting a grace you know just go up to a brother just put a big hit, hit, give him a big old piece of duct tape say, here you know give it to him for christmas give it to him for his birthday what's this anytime you feel like you're going to say the wrong thing just whoop, just put it right there we got to go god's way amen okay guys a couple more and we're going to dig in here we've got a good good uh group today uh watching this is good ouch 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 Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes his way, and he who hates correction will die. Uh, Solomon, could you set it any just non-planer? <laughs> uh, okay, harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way. In other words, God is going to discipline us, okay? And you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way, okay? And whoever hates correction will die. Um, there's no two ways to look at that. I mean, you have to understand that, that God does not want you getting off track because he has blessings for you, right? It's like if there was an airplane and one of the wings, right, was broken, and you say, oh, no, man, that's no, that's no big deal. We're, we're going to fly this plane. We're going to fly it. No, you're going to fly that plane right into the ground. It's not going to go anywhere. The people are going to die. So you got to understand that correction is necessary it's necessary and harsh discipline i mean i mean i don't know about you guys but there's been times in my life where i just i was starting to go the wrong way and it was like god went boom you are not going that way and it was kind of like whoo okay now i know the bible even talks about that god uh, disciplines those who he loves right if god didn't discipline us right then then we wouldn't be as kids he would be the worst father in the world good fathers know how to bring discipline or order into their children's life okay uh you know not cruelly right not meanly but lovingly so so again let's ask ourselves this question are we uh, let's look at the second part of this scripture okay he who hates correction will die are you letting god use the people he wants to use in your life today to bring correction you know the greatest way to bring correction into your life oh man if you will live in the word if you will get in the word let the word correct you do you know the more that you will let jesus correct you in his word the less that he'll use people to correct you <laughs> the least correction if you don't want it if maybe you say well I, I don't like a lot of correction well let god correct you let him continue to correct you. But if he allows somebody to bring correction, whoever hates correction will die. Well, that doesn't mean you're necessarily physically going to die. It just means you're not going to receive everything that God has for you. And how many of you know God wants to do that in our life? Okay. And uh, wow, we're going to, 
Wow, we're just going to finish this up. Maybe three more, three more, four more. We'll see. I think three more, okay? Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the son of men, okay? Look at that. See, now what, what scripture does that marry with? Well, it marries with verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Do you see that? Okay? That was verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Verse, verse 11, hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more are the hearts of the Son of Man? So what, what is that saying? It says God sees it all. He sees it all. He sees it all. So don't you know that God knows about the struggles? He knows about uh, the pain. He knows about some of the loneliness. He knows about the struggle. There's some people watching me right now. You just have said this. Nobody understands what I'm going through. My friends, the word says that hell and destruction are before the Lord. In other words, he sees it. If God sees hell and destruction, right? If God sees all those things, right? Then how much more does God see your heart? How much more does God know? Isn't this a good word? How much more does God see what's going on in your life? Okay? Phil and Esther Mitchell says, do you notice if you fill yourself with the word, you stay on the road to righteousness? That's right. And then Michael Basson says, yeah, I've, I've learned from the mistake of others. Uh, Gary Kimber says, I know people who do not like discipline. Okay? So when God uses someone, here, here's some areas like, like God wants to use in correction. I'll give you an example. Parents, grandparents, pull your children out of public school. Okay? That's an area of correction that God wants to bring into your life. He doesn't want those children corrupted. He doesn't want them having this terrible indoctrination of the world in their life. That's an area of correction. You have to ask yourself, am I going to receive correction? Am I a wise person? Or am I going to reject it and be what God says on the wrong path? God says, I want you to put up marijuana. I don't want you smoking dope. That's a correction, right? So you can either take the path of wisdom or you can despise it, right? Areas of correction, right? Alcohol, lying, lust, all these things. God sees everything that's going on. This, go, this ties into verse 12. I know this is strong. Here we go again. <laughs> A scoffer does not... Oh, really? Solomon doesn't let up, does he? <laughs> he wants to make a point. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him, nor will he go to the wise. In other words, instead of getting the wisdom of God, a scoffer's like, <laughs> I put it on Facebook. Did you see how many likes I got? Yeah, I put that thing up there. People and told me I was right. And he won't. So, so the person that's having relationship issues, right, they will, they will uh, tell everyone in the world what they think they should do. But they're not going to go to someone that's been married successfully for 20 years or 25 or 30 or 40 years and ask them for advice. No, they're going to ask all their friends who, who their husband is mean to them, who abuses them, who's uh, angry, is mean. You know, when you get advice from people, are you going to scoffers? Okay? A scoffer doesn't love one who corrects him, nor will he go to the wise. So a scoffer is someone that won't let people speak into their life, right? You, how, how do you analyze someone's life? You look at their family. You look at their finances. Am I taking financial advice from somebody that's in debt? <laughs> Am I taking marital advice from someone that can't even keep their own house in order? Am I taking parenting advice from someone whose kids don't even have a relationship? The kid couldn't wait to turn 18 so they could move out of the house. What does that say? We're not talking about independence. We're talking about they want to get out of your house because you didn't raise them. You didn't raise them with that heart relationship. Our families, guys, our families are so broken 
because, because fathers and mothers have got to form those bonds and get them out of the, get the kids out of public school. The public school are, is not nurturing the family unit. In fact, they want to replace the family unit and tell your children that it's normal for two moms to be a family or two dads to be a family, you know, or, or you know, all these crazy situations. Guys, this scripture says a scoffer. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him, nor will he go to the wise. Wow, we still people are still with us. That's so strong. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and people are still on. That shows that people are listening. Okay, Michael Basson says, cast all our cares on him. William, uh, uh, Michael Basson said, God uses people to correct me. Sometimes it comes across harsh, right? But I need to be thankful God's using the person to correct me. That's something that we uh, also can discern. Maybe God is using someone in their life, in our life, to correct us, but they're doing it the wrong way. Don't miss out on the gold just because it's wrapped up in the wrong package. Sometimes God is correcting us, and the person that God's trying to use isn't doing it the right way. Don't throw away the correction because of the package, okay? One final verse, or maybe two, we'll see. I think one more will be good, okay? A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken the spirit of is broken a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken it talks about the heart a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance see your countenance is not just a smile it doesn't say a merry heart makes you smile it means you have a cheerful countenance on your life. That means your overall being. And you know what a merry heart comes from? A merry heart, a cheerful heart, comes from doing the will of God. Let me say this. When you're doing your own thing, your own ways, there's a lot. How many of you know that there's a real lack of joy in the church of Jesus? There's a real lack of joy in the earth today. There's a lot of people, even right now, that are, that are just really down. Let me say this. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. There's things going on in the earth today. We can still have the joy of the Lord in the midst of all of these things, guys. We can still have the peace of God. By sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. That's what the scripture says there. I'll put it, put it up there one more time. We're going to share one more verse. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. When we're going the wrong way, it causes this, this brokenness, not in a good sense, <laughs> but just this, oh man, something's broken. I'll tell you a little something about me. I don't like anything that's broken, okay? Except for people. <laughs> I do like people that are broken so God can heal them. But items that <clears throat> are broken, I don't like it. I will either find a way to fix it. If I can't fix it, then I'll give it away or sell it or throw it away. But I don't like anything in my life that is broken. And guess what? God doesn't want you uh, to have, he wants, your, he wants you to have a brokenness about you to where you're teachable. But he doesn't want you, he wants you whole. One of the words for peace is shalom. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. Uh, we say the word Jerusalem. It's actually Yerushalom, which is the city of peace. God wants to have his shalom, his peace on the inside of you. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not peace like the world gives, but my peace I give to you. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. You want to see how people are, someone's walk with the Lord is? Guess what? They have a cheerful countenance. Why is that? Because, right, Nehemiah 8.10, come on. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. When we allow God's power to come into our life, is anyone receiving this? Amen. I know I am. Amen. Okay, final, finally, one more verse. Well, we've had such an amazing time. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. Okay, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Okay, the heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. But the, heart of, but the mouth of fools feed on foolishness. Okay, so we're either feeding ourselves on knowledge or foolishness, okay? That's why, that's why when we look at situations, we put everything through the lens 
of the word of God. Put everything through the lens of God's truth. I'm seeking, let me ask you this. Are, are you seeking knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. That goes along with the scripture that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but the knowledge of the holy brings understanding. Well, what does it mean to have the knowledge of the holy? It means to have knowledge of the holy one. It means to have a knowledge of who God is. It means to have the holiness of God. Someone sent me something the other day. I believe it was a prophecy or a word. Yes, it was a word from uh, Pastor David Minor. I believe that has gone on to be with the Lord, but he was a prophet in the earth here in the Pacific Northwest, pastored a local church here for many years, and uh, there was a prophetic word, and and the and the uh, kind of a summary of the word that I got out of it was that this move of holiness. Can we say holiness? When you think of the word holiness, right? What do you think of? What do you think of? Because the Bible says, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Okay, righteousness is what God has made us on the inside. Okay? He's, he's made us righteous. And, and he's also given us his righteousness, his holiness is on the inside of us. But to live holy, to live godly, means that that way of living, that way of thinking, right? That means that we are holy in our speech. We have holiness in our speech. We have holiness in our thoughts. Pure, okay? It means it's our, our lives are set apart. They're sanctified by God, okay? The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. We want to know the Lord. Do you want to know the Lord in a deeper way today? I know you do. I know you do. I know I do. I want to see God do something new, something fresh. Amen? And we have to have the holiness of God flooding our being today. We want to be filled with the holiness of God. You know, the Word of God says this way. Some people say, well, I'm not Jesus. Or they'll say, well, being holy, that's for, are you just going to be holier than thou? No, I'm just going to be holy. Why, why should I be holy? Why should I live holy? Because Jesus said this, be holy even as I am holy, says the Lord. Did you hear that? Be holy even as I am holy, says the Lord. So we want to have this spirit of holiness in us. Guess what? God wants us to live. I feel this so strong. God wants to have his holiness in us so strong to when, when we're living our life, man, the holiness of God, the presence of God, the purity of God, that's why it is so important, men and ladies, it's so important for you to have the right thoughts going through your head. If all we're feeding on is the media, right? If all we're feeding on is our phone, our computer, if that's all we're getting, guess what? We're not going to have that river of holiness, of righteousness flowing through us. It's kind of like you have this beautiful river on the inside of you that you've received from God. You've received the holiness of God. You've received the righteousness of God. But guess what? You've got to let that river flow out of you. You've got to let that love of God, the holiness of God, you've got to let it flow out of you and into your television. You've got to let the holiness of God flow out of you and into your phone. You've got to let the holiness of God flow out of you through your mouth, through your lips, through your thoughts. And then if you do that, guess what? There'll be blessing. There'll be victory. There'll be breakthrough, right? And that's why it's, it said in Proverbs 2, the tongue of the wise uses, righteous, uh, uses knowledge rightly. And then as we do that, as we do those things, we're going to see it. And we're going to see this. I want to go back to this and we'll close. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. That's what we want to do. We want to have the, the cheerful heart of God today. Awesome. We're going to have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you that your power is upon us. Your grace is here. I ask, Holy Spirit, for the men that are watching this, and if there's women watching, 
them as well. Father, let your kingdom come alive in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we want to apply all these scriptures to our life today. We want to apply all of these words of life to us. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that we are people of wisdom. Can we say this prayer together? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you today, fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your knowledge. Fill me with your power. I want to be used by you. But more than that, I want to know you. Take just a moment, men. Take just a moment, ladies. Let Jesus touch your heart. God, thank you. I just lift my life to you, Lord. I lift my life to you, Lord. I say be glorified in my life. I praise you, God. God, we want to speak the right words. We want to have the right thoughts. Today is a day of victory. In Jesus' name, amen. What an amazing time we've had again. I love being with all of you. It was a blessing. My son joined us today uh, in the room here, studying the Word along with us. Man, I want to encourage you. Get the Word of God alive in your life and in your families. Don't let the mistakes of yesterday determine your victories of today. You've got victory that God has for you to walk in. We love each and every one of you. Uh, the ladies are having a Bible study today at 1.30, starting a new uh, series. It's, it's amazing, Cleaning House, talking about physical and spiritual house cleaning, getting the devil out of your house. It's going to be really good, ladies. Um, but also, guys, um, let God move in your heart today. Tomorrow night is our Momentum, 7 o'clock live and uh, if you need anything if you need prayer let us know those of you that are giving online nalwgive.com nalwgive.com we love you all god bless you have a blessed day we'll see you soon